Yes, there are the people who know me from What Not to Wear, and most people still know me from What Not to Wear. It will be on my tombstone. She was on What Not to Wear. There is no question. I remember one specific incident. Uh, I was upstate, and I was sitting with my girlfriend and my dog, and you know we were having a cocktail, and it was a beautiful afternoon. And I saw out of the corner of my eye that this woman had recognized me, and I was waiting for the, I loved What Not to Wear. Why don't you guys bring it back? Where's Clinton? Um, and instead, she said, excuse me, I don't want to interrupt your afternoon, but I can't thank you enough for talking about menopause. And it was the first time I'd heard it, and that was maybe two and a half years ago, and I was almost brought to tears that somebody was recognizing that I was making this change. I don't think there was a specific point where I said, I'm gonna be an advocate for menopause. I mean, I don't know anybody who thinks they want to do that, but um, it really happened to me sort of out of necessity. And at around 47, when I started to experience um, a difference in my career, difference in my physical appearance, difference in my mood, uh, difference in my financial situation, I started to think, oh my God, is this a midlife crisis? And frankly, I didn't know anything about menopause. I didn't know anything about hormonal fluctuation, and I didn't know how it affected all parts of the body. So for me, once I started to realize what was happening, once I started to do my homework, I realized nobody is talking about this. And there are gonna be 1 billion people in menopause in 2025. So I better start now. My passion for, for the menopause experience, uh, having gone through it, and my passion for the way we live into our midlife experience, um, really made me realize that if I'm not going to be selling product, I want to be giving information. And that feels really important to me. Oh, there are so many misconceptions about menopause. I don't even know where to start. I mean, unfortunately, I think in some cases, we really have to focus on what is symptomatic of menopause in terms of what happens in perimenopause specifically. Perimenopause is before menopause. Menopause is one day, just to educate everybody, one day, for, it is the year anniversary without a period. So those are the uh, vasomotor symptoms that we associate with menopause. Hot flashes, night sweats, insomnia, brain fog, joint pain, muscle fatigue, um, oh, food allergies. I could go on and on and on. And those things feel scary. They also feel scary when it's about mood, rage, anxiety, dread, depression. When all of those things happen around the same time or you don't know that they're connected to each other, it can feel like a deluge of things are going wrong because any one of those symptoms by themselves is very easy to brush aside and dismiss. And you may experience it more severely or less severely. You may have more frequency of hot flashes or less. We don't know that, but we can at least give you a path to follow that you can then customize to your own specific needs. When I think about what I wish people had told me was one that perimenopause can start as early as 38 and I thought it started at 70. Uh, so that was the first thing. I was like, what is happening to me at 47? Had no idea. And frankly, there is um, you know, research that says that women between 45 and 55 are at the most vulnerable for the highest decrease in earning potential, divorce and depression. I don't think that's by accident. What we have been calling the midlife crisis is really both uh, a confluence of what is happening to us in terms of hormonal fluctuation and life stressors, right? You've got kids or empty nest syndrome, your elder care or your parents are dying, you may be losing your job or you may be pivoting. What I do find is that once you're past the tough stuff, once you're past the symptoms, then you can talk about what does it mean if I am going to throw away all of the societal values that I held dear while I was young, right? Youth is everything, beauty is everything, uh, external validation is everything. And let me tell you, I mean this sincerely, it is breathtaking what that freedom feels like. And that is not in response to uh, any kind of bitterness or thinking that you know we're no longer uh, viable or sexual or useful in society. There is a real shift in the way that we think. And I think that Gen X's legacy is going to be to make midlife and middle age, as menopause as that threshold, really a cool place to be. Show us how you spent it. Whoa! Oh my God, shut up. I love it.
I love it. I'll be honest with you. When you are seen one way in the public eye and they want you to stay that way, it is very hard to change people's minds. It's hard to change people's minds and hearts about who you are and what you want to do. And I came at this from a very haphazard way, I think. And it wasn't seamless and it wasn't clear and I've been working on that ever since. But my dedication is to the same principles that I cared about on What Not To Wear. Do you feel good about yourself? Is it self-love? Is there self-acceptance? Is there self-worth there? And I will tell you that menopause can rock those things. Aging can rock those things. When you look in the mirror and you don't look like yourself or feel like yourself or don't know what to do or get kicked out of the corner office, it is a scary time. That doesn't mean that something being hard doesn't mean we can't get past it, right? I mean, Glennon Doyle is so famous for saying we can do hard things, right? We can, and menopause is one of them. It's hard, but it isn't hopeless. And aging is hard, but it isn't hopeless. And this idea that aging is a privilege, yes. But, you know, that feels very Hallmark Channel to me. Aging is about what are we doing now to talk about longevity, to talk about our health span, not just our lifespan. And really, menopause is the threshold through which when you walk through it, that is what you're looking at. You are looking at safeguarding your health from that moment forward. And that kind of information, we should be imparting as early as we can to people. Now I get it, if you're in your 20s, you don't wanna to listen to anybody talk to you about menopause, but by the time you're in your late 30s, you should at least have some idea of what you can be doing to safeguard against certain things that will happen when you start going through perimenopause. But you know, that's why I'm so excited that I'm doing things like a partnership with Canyon Ranch. We are doing the first ever comprehensive menopause and midlife immersion that looks at this stage of life and this experience in a 360 way so that we're talking about the physical stuff. We're talking about the emotional and mental stuff. We're talking about the sexual stuff. We're talking about nutrition and exercise. We're talking about pelvic floor health and we're talking about style. I'm going to do a style clinic every day for this immersion because I want people to feel like they are in control of what is happening to them. It is unfortunate that there are still issues around being able to talk about women's bodies. The idea that vagina is a word that we're not supposed to say in ads is ridiculous. I mean, what are the two biggest issues that men have in midlife? erectile dysfunction and hair loss, and boy, do we have billion dollar industries to fix those. So it's time that we start paying attention to the inequity in women's health, that we are putting more money towards it, that we are changing legislation around it. We don't have bodily autonomy. We have to figure this out. And this is something that is gonna take a lot of work and a lot of effort and a lot of voices, and I hope to be one of them.